My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. It has no value to you, but it has great value to me and the dogs that I'll be rescuing in the near future here. So let's get right into it. All right, today I wanted to go over, uh, you know, the Fibonacci retracement in the uh, universal crypto trading technique that I have been uh, doing in the past three videos. It's been about a month or so since my last video. Um, there isn't really anything really to show you, um, but I thought I'd get back into Fibonacci, so I kind of explain myself as far as what I'm looking at um, and what professional traders are looking at when it comes to futures traders and just day traders um, and swing traders, obviously. Uh, it's, it's, it's something that they actually do use um, as a small accentuator on possibly where more probability than not of where the market is going to be going. Um, it's not an exact science. Nothing is. Obviously, you can't predict the future, but you can put probabilities on everything. Everything we do in life is based on probability. I don't care if you're walking across the street or you're at a light um, in your car and you're driving through an intersection, there's a probability of you possibly getting sideswiped or hit. You know, you're walking across the street, there's a possibility you might trip and fall or you might get hit by a car. It's small probability, but it's a probability. It's, it doesn't matter. So everything we do, you know, it is based on probability. Um, so and nothing's different when it comes to, you know, uh, trading stocks or coins. So Fibonacci, I wanted to touch on it when it comes to the universal crypto trading style. And you, uh, I've been telling everybody in the past three videos using the MA, uh, the 10 MA, the 100 MA, the MACD, and the Fibonacci retracement, and of course the, the uh, language of the candles itself. But in this one, I just wanted to touch on Fibonacci and exactly how they are using it. Now, I've watched a lot of videos on people trying to explain what Fibonacci is. And it's really hard as, as far as what is Fibonacci. Well, obviously, Fibonacci was a person in the 11th century. He figured out a mathematical uh, equation um, to where Fibonacci retracement is a cousin number. Um, cousin numbers, basically. 786, 618, 382, and the 236 uh, line are actually real Fibonacci numbers. 786, 618. 382 and 236. The halfway mark, which is the 50% mark is the way I see it, they put that in there just to break up that big gap between the 618 and the 382. It is not a Fibonacci number. With that being said, that 50% line is used by day traders and, and uh, futures traders um, as a point to basically say on a swing trade or the last high from the last low, um, which, what's the feeling in the market at that point in time? And, and, and let me explain that. So with the point, with the 50% line, which is the 0.5 line here, this green line here, right? It runs all the way down right here. After this big wave, right? It got pushed up. So there's the high and that's where the last low was. It got pushed up all the way here and then it started to correct. Now, corrections is where futures traders are looking to either stay in or sell out. It's simple as that on where they want, what they want to do and where's, you know, where they start as opposed to where they sold out to make easy money. So what does it mean? Okay, so it, it all this money came in, it pumped up, it got all the way up to 180 at one point in time, and then it came back down. So what does this halfway mark mean? It's okay, the, the, that's the high, that's the new low, that's the new high. That's the halfway mark between the bunch. All this money, right, will be considered basically getting eaten up and gone if it breaks that 50 line and keeps continuing down to the 382. So the 50 line is really something that they look like, look at to say, okay, is the market going to keep stair stepping up or going sideways and not just and not going down, or is it going to go down? Is it because if basically if they say, okay, I'm I'm scared at 50. You're going to lose more profits because it, it it starts dramatically running down. And as you can see, this one, and I'll, I'll zoom into this one from the 50 line, right? So everyone's waiting. It's it's getting sold off, right? It's getting sold off because people are taking high profits as much as they can. 
and it comes here and this is where you see the green start eating it back up they don't want it to go down here they don't want it to go down to the 382 um, as a big bar you know what I mean as an actual you know the Reds win the day so as you can see they barely won the day and then it comes back up it doesn't break the 50 at that point and then it just keeps going kind of sideways um, so the Fibonacci is really, really, um, it, it does multiple things. So that's one thing it does is that 50% line for futures traders, basically saying that there's a rally of sales off. It's gone half past the 50% line and it's constantly going down. So you better sell out because all that money is just, is now gone for the most part. All these, all these people have eaten it up for the profits and it's making it a sell. Well, we hit the 50 line and it's so it's relative. It's not perfect in any way it's just a relative cousin number to help you kind of break up the you know and so when it comes to fibonacci when it comes to the 50 percent line that's just a breakup from fibonacci but the futures traders do look at that basically saying that all that money's been gone if it breaks that and continues down it just becomes a, a massive sell-off and i've seen it happen more times than not doesn't happen every time because we're based on probability as you can see, it broke down that 50, but then it came back up. It's there. It's these big bars is what you really are scared about. If it breaks that 50 and this one became a big red bar, it would have became a sell off, at least down to the two, three, six line in between these two and not in between these two. So you just have to kind of look at it that way. Now, how much probability does it help me out on when I'm actually trading? It doesn't give me that much probability when it helps me or not help me. So, you know, I put five, 10% on my Fibonacci retracement probability wise, if it's showing me, you know, uh, probabilities that it's not gonna continue going down past that 50% line. So again, that's one thing that Fibonacci does. Now, Fibonacci retracement lines, these 618, 382, 2369, or 236 and 786 are actually real cousin Fibonacci numbers cousin numbers okay so they act as support resistant lines when things are going up right or things are going down so you would consider it say this big green bar right the 618 right it's not really breaking 618 so because it's so it's kind of relative right now it's correlating right didn't go down on past the, the 50 percent line then boom it broke the 618 line, came all the way back up here. And now, so when it breaks it, right, and it comes this far and the next one's in between, the 786 line now becomes the resistance support line. So they're just small stair, stair step up correlation support resistant lines to help you kind of consider what's going on in the market. Again, I only put 5-10% on this because this is probably one of the last indicators I look at initially, right? Because again, I have my... 10 MA, my 100 MA, and then my MACD is is uh, set at 10 and 100 as well for my convergence divergence lines, and it works out great for me. Again, I you know I did seven out of eight trades last time, so uh, my last three videos just to show you guys how I'm doing. And as you can see, I'm always retracing my Fibonacci lines because I'm on swing trades, so I put them in between my swing trades or at least time frames uh, within that for the last high to the last low. And so now, as you can see. It's going sideways um, and it's actually back up here. So this isn't really relative anymore. It was helping me when it was over here. Now it's over here and now I'm using these 786 lines and the 618 line to help me with support resistant lines. So, you know, as you can see, um, here's the 786 line and it's actually broken over that. So now it's in between the one and the 786 line, which is a good sign right so initially uh, i kind of tell you the steps that i look here at i look at my 10 to 100 first thing and foremost you can see that the, that the 100 is on its way up to meet up with the candles um the 10 right is on its way up right now right on a slower on a, a smaller average day average 10 day average 100 day average still on it's an incline up and then i look in my macd I look at what's been going on. Okay, there was a sell point right there, or a buy point, and now it's gapped away, and it's by the 20. So it's kind of like kind of right there in the middle. Um, doesn't really indicate anything besides you. There was a buy point right there. So 
is it good to get in right now or is it not? And that's kind of where I start looking at my Fibonacci um, and I start looking at the candle language, the actual candle language of what's going on. So right here, right? Inclined, inclined 10, inclined 100. It popped, it crossed over the red. The next one turned green and now it's far away from the red and the red's coming back up to meet it. So what's going to happen? Is it going to correct a little bit? Is it going to come back down in the blue or is it just going to keep going up uh, on, on a constant up, you know? Is it going to make a new high is kind of the question right now because 280 was the last high right from this last high 278 279 um so that's the question is it gonna is it gonna go up or is it just gonna keep going sideways and you know and then kind of everything comes to a precipice again it starts meeting up it's con it's consolidating um but we'll see because obviously now this is gonna have to you know doesn't have to but more probability wise the blue convergence line is going to cross below the divergence line, which is a sell point. So there are things to consider here. It is on a power play. So, but my probabilities are not where I want them to be um, to buy in right now. So those are the things that I look at. I want to be confident in my trading and I'm not that confident in my probabilities. Probably give myself 60% right now. Not enough, 60, 65%. I want 70, 75% at least, or I don't make the trades um, just because coins are too volatile. Um, so, you know, those are the things that I look at. Obviously, another thing I look at is the crypto fear and greed index, because um, that shows me what the sentiment analysis is generally kind of doing in the market right now. So greed today, 70. I mean, that's great to see. 67, 68, last month was 42. So it's a huge, huge difference. And everybody's getting in a pump. Um, and obviously, I look at the coin market cap. It's at 271 billion right now. Uh, Bitcoin's at 87.24. Ethereum's at 268. Looks like there's a little little correction now going down here. Um, but when I actually look into my Ethereum USD, I use Kraken because um, I just want to cash out into my my uh, cash wallet um, and then you know keep the profits when I when I buy back in. Hopefully. Uh, and again, I'm only using one Ethereum just for these videos, so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. I have way more other trades, which is what I've been doing for the past month and uh, working my butt off. So um, trying to get my crypto, uh, my rescue going uh, up north and using cryptocurrency to sustain it, crypto mining. So uh, I, I have a, um, a uh, crowdfunding I'm going to be starting here soon to do that. So I would really appreciate um, some support with that. But that's up to you guys. Um, but subscribing to this channel and all that would help me out as well. So again, you know, as you can see, this is on a big, big incline up. It's coming up. I mean, this is on a big power play. It waved up nicely. You know, it's like I had good two waves on here. Three waves. Two small ones, one big one. And now it's going sideways and it's in between the one and the seven, eight, six. Um, so what's it, what's it going to do? Is it going to recorrect and kind of stay down here? Is it going to drop down or is it going to keep going up um, with the small correction at the moment? Well, that's what I'm looking at. And so that's where I'm kind of looking at my MACD. It's gapped away pretty well. So, you know, the buy point was over here um, and it's gapped away. So I kind of missed it uh, for this Ethereum trade. But, you know, I have other trades running. Uh, right now. So I just thought I'd make a video for this. I wanted to show everybody that what Fibonacci is all about. What actually do traders look at when they're looking at Fibonacci and what are they using it for, right? So the halfway mark, again, is not a Fibonacci real cousin number. It's just used as the halfway mark to say all this new money that came in, okay? And if it crosses down underneath that 50 and stays underneath that 50, all this new money is considered gone. And that's why everybody's selling out. Everybody just wants profits, obviously, after a big pump. So that's sell out, sell out to get your money. And now everybody starts getting a little scared, but they don't want it going down. So, boom. I'm not saying futures are controlling it. I'm just saying that they're indicating that, you know, they're not that scared where they just start clicking that sell button. Sell, 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 sell. sell. They're, fine. they're looking at the charts and finding out what's going on and they're seeing battles. So they're kind of waiting around and seeing it go back up to make more profit, you know, or keep on a, on a profitable scale. So um, more wins and losses, the casino's edge. That's really what it's all about. Um, but yeah, any questions on that, you know, feel free to comment and I will uh, answer it as quickly as possible. 
to give you a rundown here. You know, I didn't just learn this stuff from YouTube videos and so on and so forth. I had a mentor. He's retired at 40. He was one of my professors at one of my schools. And, uh, you know, he's a stock trader. But, you know, trading stocks and trading coins, there really isn't much difference um, as far as the, the market goes with technical analysis. It's just more volatile. But the MA still mean the same thing. The MACD still means the same thing. Fibonacci still means the same thing. It all means the same thing. So nothing's really changed. And uh, again, I, I last trades I did for this video, I was seven out of eight in uh, three part videos. So uh, check those out as well. Um, but just want to let you guys know, you know, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. I'll host my channel and the dogs I'll be rescuing in their new future here. Have a good day. Keep up the grind. Happy Memorial Day.